happening guys. My favorite part about the summertime is the consistent calm weather we have which makes for some awesome free diving. Did another day trip over in the 21 foot angler with Scott over to the West End. Checked in, ran north and uh, dove some of our stuff up in that area. Uh, my mask broke which is how I film so I had to use a backup mask which doesn't have a GoPro mount on it but I still was able to film some good, good shots of Scott. Uh, but I did miss out on some other pretty cool footage. Anyways, got a new mask. We'll be good to go on the next trip. Uh, took a little break during the day. Caught some yellowtail. But you'll see all that in the video. We'll do a sticker giveaway again. Uh, comment below which sticker design you'd like. You can see all of my designs and hats on my website at h2ovinyldesigns.com. And that's where you can order any of my merchandise. Uh, follow on Instagram at H2O Vinyl Designs and subscribe here so that you get to hear who the winner is in the next video or read who the winner is in the description. So let's get into some diving for you. Flat as a lake! The Invincible back on. Taylor's going down into the cabin for a little fiesta. Going down. What? Coming down. We'll get back with you when we're in the Bahamian water. Crystal clear. So we started off the day pretty shallow, uh, found a nice little hoggy sleeping under this ledge. It was definitely a keeper fish, but decided to pass up on this one because, again, we're only allowed one each, so got to make sure they're good. This one here definitely wasn't a giant fish by any means, but wanted to kind of get the ball rolling and get a fish in the boat. And he was a decent one, so lined up on him, plugged him with the sling, and swam him up to the boat. This next spot was pretty cool. It was uh, still shallow, around 25 foot, but a lot more rock on the bottom and a lot more life, like the grunts and the little tropical fish and triggers, which we're not targeting, but usually means there's going to be some better fish around. And there was a lot of little hogfish on this little section and some nice uh, strawberry grouper. And these strawberry grouper, also known as speckled hinds, they're not regulated, so there's no minimum size on them uh, in the States, and in the Bahamas you're allowed to shoot them as well. So. Most ones we get are about this size. I'd say it's probably about a 12, let's say 12 to 15 inches is a pretty good size strawberry grouper. And they are really, really white meat, really good to eat. Right after I put my head back in the water, I saw Scott lining up on a nice Ciro mackerel. And the Ciro mackerel, they're, they're good eating mackerel. They're bigger than Spanish mackerel, smaller than kingfish, and better meat than both of them, I would say. And this one was coming right up to us to give us a real good shot with the sling. Uh, but decided to pass on it because if we did not roll them, it would have been an adventure trying to land that thing and chasing them all over the place. Here we got Scott lining up on a nice strawberry that's tucked up under a ledge and I'm just kind of laying in the sand filming him because my mask broke and I couldn't really film and shoot at the same time.
here we saw a nice grouper sitting on the rock and looking back at the video it looks more like a red grouper but when we were there I saw that thing lit up and it definitely looked like a Nassau grouper and then turned dark so we weren't shooting it because you're not allowed to have Nassau grouper in Florida so you can't bring it back so we decided to let that one go and then uh, move over to a different little ledgy area where there were some blacks and there were black grouper absolutely everywhere they were being really spooky and this was a deeper spot like 60 65 foot and shooting a sling in 65 foot is really hard and you can just see all the life around here all the blacks all the caves they can go in it's a pretty sweet spot This is that same area we saw where a bunch of the grouper were going into a cave that went back pretty far and Scott had a good dive down there, some really good bottom time and was able to line up on one of the groupers and land a good shot on it with the sling. I thought for sure he'd be coming up with a black grouper and I swam down to kind of help him and as he's coming up I could see that it was a yellowfin grouper and that's a really really good size yellowfin they don't get anywhere near as big as the blacks do so that one I don't think we put it on a scale but it probably weighed around like 15 pounds or so Yeah, I didn't know what happened. I thought you hit him. Yeah, move. Is there a couple over in there? You can pick which ones you want. There's some big ones. Uh, you're going to pick out a good one? Is that a good one? <laughs> I got a hat up here too. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Remember how to change the song if you want to? We need a de hooker. Come up to the cooler. Dude, I got spine. Head, now he's gone. Look at that big mackerel still down there though. Can you open that cooler, please? The blue one. That's a big yellowfin, though. We gotta look up the yellowfin right here. Give me, give me. Oh! Hey, watch yourself. It's the ground's not get to your hook. Eventually, that shark's just gonna start eating our face. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. One. Boom, son. Ooh, nice one, nice one. Eat it, eat it, eat it. This one right at the sharks. Oh, yeah. Side casting them. That is a good one, Joe. It's a giant. Whoa! <laughs> Ooh, Look at the mackerel swiping at him. We gotta catch that mackerel. Okay, you ready? 
mackerel. Where are you at? Where is he at? right here on the right. You should start to see mine. It's getting down a little ways. Here he comes, here he comes. Dude! What are you doing? Should I just hold it tight? At least let him eat it, dude. She's just ripping it away before he can even touch it. Jumbos. Anyway. Yeah, let me get, uh, maybe not. Oh man. Got here? Almost. Zeros on deck. That's pretty sick. Got him. All right, now y'all tail. All right. You gotta take that on your side and kind of push it down. There you go. You got it. There you go, Tay. Go under the point right there. He's sitting right there. He just tucked under. The story behind this one is pretty cool. We actually shot him and lost him a little bit ago. Probably close to like 150 feet away from this spot, but saw he was heading this direction. And thought he'd be following one of these little ledges and we got lucky and we were able to find him because it was a really nice hogfish and we were able to get him in the boat. Hate to have to shoot a fish and I end up losing it. That was so funny. You're like, I'm gonna find this fish. I'm like, there he is. Damn, thank you. <laughs> I literally couldn't even tell you one time. Here, Tater, you gotta put him in the cooler. Now you got Scott on the bottom, he threw up a little cloud of sand in front of him and it seemed to make the hogfish turn towards him and let him get close enough. It went into a ledge, but he still was able to get a really good shot on it. And this was a beast of a hog. I swam up ready to put a second shot in it, but uh, he was able to hang on to him. What you got? Oh. Alright, that's all I got. The angler made it back on another trip. Always. Just before the storms. And we found a long line mess that was cut off. And a bunch of hooks and a bunch of rope. That stinks in there. Does it? Rank. Why is that smell? Time to go home. It's that long.